This video will demonstrate how to find the area of a regular polygon. So first of all, we want to make sure we count the number of sides. Six, seven, eight. There are eight sides. If you miscount the number of sides, then you're going to throw up the whole entire problem. So it's really important that you count them correctly. I know that sounds silly, but it does happen. Okay, so we're going to start by looking at this little right triangle that we've drawn in there. On the triangle, you've been given, or sorry, on the polygon, uh, you've been given the apothem, which is 8. We don't know the radius, we don't know this length, and we don't therefore know the side length of the polygon. To find the perimeter, we have to know the side length, so that's the first thing we're going to do. Okay, so to find the central angle measure, the central angle measure is found by dividing 360 by the number of sides. The central angle is this angle here. It's the whole entire angle. It's not the half that you see down here. So we're going to divide, think about dividing up into, oops, think about dividing it up into eight uh, congruent triangles and each one of them would have one eighth of the number of, of the measure of the central angle. So this will be 360 divided by 8 is our central angle measure and then we're going to cut that in half because we're looking at that right triangle. So 22.5 is that angle right there so this is 22.5 degrees. And again we know our apothem we have to find x in order to be able to do the perimeter. So next I'm going to find the x value and that will involve trig. So um, the tangent of 22.5 degrees is the opposite which is x over the adjacent which is 8. Multiply both sides by 8, x would be 8 tangent of 22.5. 8 tangent 22.5 is 3.31. I'm going to go to the hundredths on this one. So that's about 3.31. So that means if this is 3.31 that means that that side length is 6.62. So for our perimeter, our perimeter is 6.62 multiplied by how many sides there are, which is 8. And 6.62 times 8 is 52.96. 52.96. Now our area, we're going to use one half AP. So the apothem we know is 8, that was given. Our perimeter that we found was 52.96, and so we're multiplying 4 by 52.96 to 11.84, and that would be in units squared. Now your other option is if you prefer, you can cut this um, octagon into eight congruent triangles, find the area of that triangle and then multiply by eight. So you could find the area of the green triangle, which would still uh, involve using the apothem and using tangent in order to find um, the base length of the triangle. So if you decide to do that, then you would multiply by 8. If you decide you want to find the area of this little right triangle, that would work too. The difference being, after you find the area of the orange triangle, you would multiply by 16, because there's 16 of those little triangles. Now I want to remind you that an octagon is different than these other special uh, regular polygons that we talked about. So for example, in a regular triangle, these are all given to be regular, because the single measure is 60, that makes this 30, that makes this 60, 
And then that little triangle there is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. So for this one, you can use the 1, 2, root 3 to figure out um, what the apothem radius in, in a length of half of a side or a whole side is. In a square, you have 40, uh, the central angle measure would be 90. Okay, the diagonals are perpendicular, or 360 divided by 4 is 90. That makes this 45 degrees. So in a square, you have a 45, 45, 90 triangle here. Okay, you also have a triangle. These triangles are also 45, 45, 90s. So because that's 90 degrees, and those are both radii, so they're congruent, and uh, the diagonals bisect the um, angles here, the right angles, that's also a 45, 45, 90 triangle. So you also could use that triangle to find lengths or to find area. So that's an option also. And then you also have this uh, triangle here, this one, oops, I kind of missed, this triangle, still missed, okay, this triangle here, this blue triangle, that is also a 45, 45, 90, so you could also use half of the square, find the area, and multiply by 2. Now, side squared is maybe the easiest way to go, but, but uh, you have those options also. And then um, for a hexagon, this is only when it's a regular hexagon. The uh, central angle measure is 60 degrees, which means that um, the angle measure up here is 30 and this is 60. So again, you get a right triangle here you can use, but it's a 30, 60, 90 oriented differently than it was up here. So they're both 30, 60, 90s, but the 60 and the 30 have swapped spots. So if you want to use in a regular hexagon, if you'd rather not use one half AP or not use that green triangle down there, in a hexagon and only in a hexagon, these are equilateral triangles. Okay, and that's because the central angle measures 60. Those are radii, which forces the base angles to be congruent, and then this is an equilateral triangle. So in a hexagon, you have six equilateral triangles only in a hexagon. So remember that when you have equilateral triangles, you can use the S squared root 3 over 4 way to find the area of a triangle. So for example, in a hexagon, you could do the area of one of these triangles and then multiply by 6 if that's easier. This is the end of this recording.